Hi there. I am so excited to be here in the iHouse kitchen and bringing you, our iHouse supporters, a cooking demonstration with Zokorai Minya, the owner of Zim Cuisine. Zim Cuisine is a black owned small food business right here in the city of Davis. They offer farm to fork gourmet food inspired by Zimbabwean cuisine. Their offerings are made from fresh organic vegetables, sourced from local farmers, and slow grilled meats cooked to perfection with gluten-free sides. You can find them at the Davis Farmers Market on Wednesdays from 3 to 6 p.m. and head to their website or head to their website to inquire about catering. Zakarai is one of the husband and wife team owners. She will demonstrate how to make sadza, which is a staple food of Zimbabwe, and peanut butter mustard greens, my favorite, which is her most popular veggie served at farmer's market. Well, welcome to the Zim Cuisine Kitchen. Thank you, International House, for allowing us to be here. As uh, Shelly introduced us really well, I am Zokirai of Zim Cuisine. And uh, for today, I'm going to make sadza and peanut butter mustard, mustard greens. And uh, Shelly is going to help me. So, if you're at home, you can cook with us. The good thing about this is it's going to be recorded so you can go back and play it. What you need is some cornmeal, white uncooked cornmeal. You can find this at the grocery store. and It might be called corn masa, but the biggest thing is don't use the pre-cooked. You need to use the uncooked. And then we have any of your favorite greens. You really could use spinach. You could use, like today, I have curly kale. I use a lot of... Um, mustard greens because they're bitter, but today I'm going to use kale. Um, so you really can use whatever vegetable you enjoy, but green veggies are the best because they really absorb the flavor better. Um, and then some one chopped onion. So over here I have two bunches of greens. So one chopped onions for two bunches of greens. So if you're doing a one bunch of greens then you only need half an onion. And then one small tomato. It's really important for you to have tomatoes and not tomato sauce or tomato puree, um, and you'll see why later. And then our favorite ingredient that people are mostly scared about, jalapenos. This is not a spicy recipe, even though it looks like it with jalapenos. Don't be afraid to use the jalapenos. Because we're putting peanut butter in this, it's gonna be just, it's gonna mellow everything out. It'll be great. So we have peanut butter. I'm not gonna use all of this. I'm gonna use just a couple of spoons um, because we're not doing too much. And a bowl, which we're gonna use for hot water. Thank you for boiling the water, Shelly. <laughs> so have your hot water boiling while you pick up your ingredients. And then we have some cooking oil. I do prefer olive oil myself, but we will use regular cooking oil for the demonstration. And just some black pepper and salt. So you can use any of the spoons you want for the mustard greens, but when you make the salsa, which is really the hardest dish to make, which is simple because it's only the cornmeal and water, but it's just the process is hard. You need a flat wooden stick. So we call this a mugoti in our culture in Zimbabwe. You will find this sold on every street. Okay, so let's get cooking. The water is boiling. Let's boil it. Okay, so we just switch on the green pot. Should I get this first or switch on the green pot? Okay, okay. switch on the green pot and okay. then once the water is boiled, we'll get it. And we can move over okay. to the stove. Okay. So we'll start with the greens. While they're simmering, then we'll do the sadza. It's because sadza is usually served fresh and piping hot, to where like you have to dip your fingers and it's super hot. And then the greens really need to sit. So if you cook them, they're good like a few hours later after simmering or even the next day. So I'm gonna put, you know, African measuring, we never use measuring cups. So I'll put um, half a cup of cooking oil. You don't need much. And in fact, if you don't want to use any oil at all, you don't have to. So just for those that are really sensitive about oil. Uh, Shelly, could you pass me some onions and tomatoes and jalapenos? And for the salsa, you will see why we need a pot like this. Because it's hot, I need to be able to handle the pot. So I need some distance to mix it and I'll show you. So if you have just like a little bit of a deep pot, um, it'll, it'll work. Even if it's a handle like this, it'll still work. So don't worry about it. I actually had to bring this pot from Zimbabwe because you can really only find these pots in, in Southern Africa or in other parts of Africa. And so we're going to wait for oil. We need to make sure it's hot. So I always put an onion to tell me whether it's hot. Um, and you can start on medium high. This is good. And um, can you pass me a wooden stick? The smaller one. What's it called again? 
The other one is called a Mugotti. This is Mugotti. just a little bit sticky. Yeah. <laughs> All right, for the greens. So thank you. So tell me a little bit about the iFest this year. What do we have to look forward to? What are we watching? We will be watching over over 20 different performances. Some of them filmed here at iHouse, some of them sent in pre-recordings. Um, all black, indigenous, people of color, communities, and cultures that we're featuring in iFest this year. Nice. And shameless plug, my kids are going yeah. to be in there. I'm from many vibes. I may be biased, but they're the cutest kids out there. <laughs> I may be biased too, but yes, they're the cutest kids out there. Right. Okay, so some it's almost ready so this is a super easy dish to make um, especially when you have company we use it as a side so we'll have our salsa we'll have the greens and if you're vegetarian you can eat it like that this is actually gluten-free and vegan so you can enjoy it if you have those allergies and um, we always make it with a stew on the side as well so if you eat meats you can make it with a beef stew or you know chicken stew goat stew we eat every animal you can think of that <laughs> um, you can find. So oil is nice and hot so you can come closer and see. Um, and then we're going to just stir it until it's almost brown. Can I have some salt and the greens? We're going to sprinkle some salt. Like I said, African measuring. Um, I guess that's <laughs> Please do put salt because peanut butter is really sweet and this is a savory dish. So if you don't put jalapenos or salt, um, it will not be savory. Again, jalapenos are optional, but they really, for me, kind of blend the two, the sweet and salty together in a perfect way. So I'm going to wait for these to brown. So we've got our water boiled. I'm gonna saute the onions, add tomatoes, add jalapenos, and then I'm gonna add the veggies, and then boil it, and then start working on the salsa. So we're gonna need two um, jugs of boiled water. The first one is for the veggies, and the second one is for the salsa. So something interesting about salsa is that um, in our African culture, Sadza is the test to the daughter-in-law. So when somebody is getting married, the biggest test is they give them the biggest pot of sadza to make. And if they make a really big pot, then people in the other family feel very confident that she'll be able to feed them. So it's actually a hilarious test because many of us don't pass it. Um, because when you get married, you go to the village to visit like his grandparents and a lot of people aren't used to cooking on the fire and like you know if you live in the city like me you're used to a pot like this and then um, during the test it's a pot like this sometimes an actual drop if there's like a hundred people at the ceremony so you can imagine asking a city girl like me to to cook in a, in a big drum <laughs> um, so our onions are uh, nice and brown so we'll add our jalapenos I make a jalapeno and onion and lemon salad. The tomatoes is a simple salad, but um, it's actually really good with fish. So maybe that'd be a cooking class for next time. Yeah. And now I am going to add some tomatoes. You can zoom in, kind of see the mixture. Make sure your combination looks just like this. So we could add some black pepper. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you to start scooping some peanut butter into that glass bowl. Okay. Uh -huh. um, how about uh, those black spoons, like five of those black spoons? Okay. And the water is going on. Okay. okay. I like black pepper, can you tell? Greens. 
And then now it's time to add the greens. So the funny thing about greens is, so you just shred them really thin like you did here. I did. Um, if they shrink, so you, you can load up the pan. Like even though it looks like you put too much, you could probably keep going and it will be fine. So for zimpy green, we cook like 15 bunches of uh, greens from Cafe Organics. <laughs> wow. 15 bunches of kale. <laughs> it's a lot of chopping. 30 onions. We really um, like to do things from scratch and that's our philosophy. And so honestly, to make sauteed greens, you can really just enjoy this like this. So if you have peanut butter allergies, you can use sun butter, or you can really just enjoy the greens just like this. See how I keep turning it? And I wanna mix in the tomatoes and onions. And then I am going to add water. I'm gonna have some of that boiling water. I'm gonna add about, you can pour it in for me. I'm gonna add about two cups of boiling water. You gotta estimate it like me. Yeah. Keep going. Is that two cups of beer? Okay, a little bit more. So it should be like this. All right. I'm gonna add a little bit more so because I want my greens to be nice and tender at the end. So I guess tell me when. Cups. Yes, I'll give them. So let's make that three cups of water. <laughs> okay, yeah, and so while this is boiling, I'm gonna prepare the peanut butter. We still need that boiling water, and I'll okay. show you. You wanna leave it here? No, I'm gonna mix it right here. So I'm gonna turn down my stove, which I uh have -huh, to low, and make sure these are simmering. And we're gonna add peanut butter and then make it similar. So that's me. So I add boiling hot water to kind of melt the peanut butter. Just make it easier to put in. And I just mix it. If you want, you could, do you want to do that? Or you want to mix it? If you want, find sure. something to do. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, then you can mix that. And then I'm going to start with the salsa in a little bit. Um, so with the salsa, it's two ingredients, cornmeal and water. It's simple, it's just hard to make. So um, stay tuned, get a drink, while we go get the ingredients of the salsa. So for the salsa, we're boiling water, but we're gonna um, mix in cold first. It's really important to mix in the cold salsa first. I'm gonna do two one-third cups for this pot. Depends how big your pot is. But two one third cups is enough. I'm going to add in a cup of cold water. You need a cup? Yeah. To make a paste. And the hardest thing is to not have, like, the cornmeal have bubbles. So that's why we, we do that. So since there's three of us here, I think I might add like another third cup. So these, this base is really dependent on how many people you're cooking for, right? Like if it's just myself, then that initial like one third cup is fine. Do you smell those greens? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so good. Yeah. I think this peanut butter is pretty well mixed. Okay. It's so ready. I'll just leave it there. Should I put it in? Or not yet? Not yet. Okay, okay. So your paste should look like this. So it really doesn't matter exactly how many cups of cold water you put it just needs to look like a paste so you need enough in there to look like a paste so like I said it depends on how many people you're cooking for and I'm gonna check those greens they should be brown so what I want is for them to be tender before I add the peanut butter so they still need more boiling that's why we're gonna start with the salsa so is the salsa water boiled mm -hmm. Okay, so while this is still boiling, and you can lower it because that's pretty high. So if I see that my water is low, I can top up the water a little bit, but this is fine. But let's say while I'm making the salsa and I see that the water level is low, I just add a little bit more water just to make sure it's really, really boiled. And 
So we're gonna switch on the salsa. Like I said, this is a hot dish. So <laughs> I switch it on high. And I have the paste. So can I have the boiling water? I'm gonna add, I'll just do it. I'm gonna add the boiling water. Like I said, it's really hard to measure because we never, we never, we never use measuring sticks. So let's say, I would say, um, one is to one quarter, which one is to four of water. So if you had put one cup of water on the paste, then I'd say put four cups of boiling water, okay? So you want it to be a thinner paste. It's gonna thicken up really fast. You're going to see. And what you want to do is keep mixing it because it's going to start boiling and it's uh, sometimes like a really messy job because the stove is always messy at the end of it. So you really need somebody else to be on dishwashing duty when, when you're making this. <laughs> so once it starts boiling like this, I put my lid and I leave it a little bit open because I want the air to escape. Check my greens. Almost ready. You're almost ready for that peanut butter. You hear that? That's the sound you want and that's the look you want. It has to like boil like that. If it gets too thick, feel free to add more water. More hot water though, not cold water because you don't want it too thick. See, like mine is getting a little thick, a little too thick. Then I want to add a little bit more water. I want it to keep simmering, but I don't want it to make, to get into a paste yet. So like I said, always have this thing of boiled water right by you because you kind of need to, to look at how it looks. Because when you start off, it looks thin, but it gets thick really fast. Should I boil some more? No, I think no. this is good. I'm gonna leave it. So you want it to, to like simmer just like that. I'm gonna, okay. In Zimbabwe it's called kukwata. So we have to make sure your sadzara kurakwata, which means you gotta make sure it boils enough before you start mixing in some more. Okay, so now our greens look like they're ready for peanut butter. So um, Shelly put in how many, three black scoops. So like I said, it depends how much peanut butter. So I'm not gonna use all of this. I'm gonna put two large spoons because um, I don't have that much uh, veggies. So I put two huge spoons, two tablespoons full of peanut butter mixed with water. And I'm just gonna mix it up, mix the paste. You see how messy it is? <laughs> the sata. <Uh -huh. laughs> I know. That's probably why they do it outside. You usually need your AC on too because it's hot. It is. The AC is on. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I mean, especially when you're at home making sata, you know. Um, some people don't make it in the summer because it's so it's such a hot dish. But so you see how in my peanut veggies, um, it's all like super liquid. It's going to thicken up pretty fast because peanut butter is, it thickens up pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you've really crushed all the, the lumps of peanut butter. And I can smell it through my mouth. You can. It smells so good. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and remember we're at Farmer's Market on Wednesday nights from 3 to 6. And you can go on zimcuisine.com to look up our weekly menu and pre-order. Um, and you can just call us too and just let us know if you're having a birthday or like a small event, county permitted, we can cater, we can drop off into go boxes if people are picking up to go. Um, yeah. And you definitely want to come to the farmer's market and have a picnic and buy some veggies. And so I'm going to lower this even more so it's simmering. That's why I like this pot because it can really simmer without burning it. Okay, now comes the hard part. So, which means our salsa has reached that point where you can start mixing it in. This is the dangerous part. <laughs> so, since it's mixed like this, 
you start adding scoops of flour of, of cornmeal at a time. So as you can see, you see why I need a, a large stick. To mix it in because I'm trying to break all these bubbles I know when you see it cooked it looks super easy like mashed potatoes <laughs> but it's not as easy to make so here I am crushing as much of these bubbles as possible you need to crush it or these lumps you need to crush it quickly because as your salsa is forming it gets harder to crush these lumps Some people even believe you can only mix it in one direction too, which I kind of never mix it in the other direction, but I've never tried. <laughs> and I really don't know if it makes a difference in how it tastes. And can you stir the peanut veggies for me? Because when it's, the peanut butter is sticky, it starts to get, it's hot. <laughs> so you see how I keep adding this cornmeal? I'm crushing it against the wall of the pot. Now you see why we need these pots with these handles because we really need to crush that cornmeal. This smells so good. And this is probably my last one. So you can make it as thick or as thin as you want. So fun fact, this is how you make porridge. You know how we ended at the bubbles? To make porridge, you just put a little bit more cornmeal and you let it bubble and put peanut butter. So kids in Zimbabwe, eat porridge every day for breakfast so really basically I mean if you, you people can eat cereal but the basic breakfast everywhere that is most affordable is porridge and it's basically this first stage of salsa with sugar salt and peanut butter mm. or sugar salt and butter some people don't like peanut butter okay so we're at the end of the salsa turning it And I lower it to simmer. You can hear it. it's kind of tired. <laughs> it's weird that we have all these analogies for food and, and their temperament. And literally, the translation and, and, and to what you're this tired is. tired from stirring it. Too. Oh, yeah, you get tired, you get sweaty. I mean, this is nothing for me because for the market, we make, um, I'll show you, I have a pot that's like four times as big, and we have two of them. So we make two of those big pots because people really like that at the market. And you just let it simmer. And uh, yeah, go get a glass of wine and get your dinner ready. And we'll be back to do, I guess, the taste test. Right. Zachary, right, tell us a little bit about your other venture, which is Tessa Foundation. Yes, Tessa Foundation. So Tessa Foundation is um, basically my giving back to the country and the community that gave me. Um, it's a nonprofit that we're based in Davis and our board is in Davis and basically we sponsor girls in Zimbabwe to go to school. Because I grew up in Zimbabwe, I have first-hand experience of what it's like to not have tuition because tuition is not free. And um, and I was, like I said, was, I grew up in the city. So you can imagine what life is like for girls in the village. They have no option but to get married early. And so for us to really tackle this problem, I wanted to make sure that we have a sustainable way of doing it. And so our approach is, like our center is girls education. But we realize we can't say we're supporting girls without supporting the rest of the family. So if you go on our website, you'll see us do, doing projects like helping a family build a home. Because we realize we can't talk about education without helping the rest of the family. We can't talk about keeping a girl in school when she, hasn't, when she doesn't have clothes, she doesn't have a house. So we're really trying to build a whole family but our focus is a girl child. And what we've seen is the whole family is supportive of our foundation because they see the value. So even though what they're saying, we're here to support your daughter, we're supporting the whole family, buying them crushes. Like we have families that lost their legs to diabetes and they didn't have crutches. We, we help with that. So um, we, we, we're seeing our girls succeed, one of them, even got an offer to UC Davis. So we're seeing a lot of really positive change. And, um, yeah, we need supporters. You know, during COVID, it's been hard for the entire world, but it's really hard for Africa because it relies on funding from the U.S. and U.K. and all the Western countries. And everybody's been hit hard here, um, and it really affects um, their 
you know, countries where they're relying on the aid. So, if anything, my philosophy is give local and give globally as well. So that's always been my thing. Like always make sure you're doing something locally and globally. So if you're giving to, let's say your local leaders or your local candidates, make sure you're giving to international as well. So yeah, awesome. And we usually have a huge tea. Uh, November 4th, which this year we're going to maybe turn it into a telethon uh, where people call in and donate and we'll just make it a very safe way of uh, fundraising and it's always safe and fun, so yeah. Well, thank you for all you do for our community here in Davis for providing us with your amazing food with no, no Cuisine and for what you do for Zimbabwean girls and for education and everything and your partnership for, with us. Yes. Um, first, I'm gonna check and make sure my greens are really um, well cooked and softened because that's the biggest part. Is they need to have really simmered well. And I'm gonna taste them. That's the only way I know how to. <laughs> what I'm testing for is if my greens are soft yet. So I'm going to take another bowl to serve the salsa and I'll put cold water because the salsa is really hard, um, it's really hot and you need kind of like a scoop like this. So I'm going to dip the scoop in water, I'm going to scoop large thing of salsa and I'm going to plate it. I'm gonna do the same in the plate. And I hope everybody else, even behind the camera, <laughs> will get to enjoy. Scoop it and serve. Like I said, it's meant to be served piping hot. So like I said, this is a very popular dish you can make at home um, when you're having company. Sauce is the secret. You really want to make sure you <laughs> have some sauce there to enjoy it with. So this is easier. Okay, so I know you brought the forks, but if we're gonna do the authentic way, <laughs> all right, is you have to eat it with your hands. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now we have our sada with mustard greens. Actually, I'd say mustard greens, but today I used kale, curly kale. So, salsa with peanut butter greens. Okay, so Shelly cooked up some forks, and I had to make her put, put them away, because it wouldn't be the authentic way <laughs> if you don't burn those hands. All right, all right. So, this is what you do. It needs to be piping hot. Okay. Um, and that's part of the enjoyment. I think also because it just is it's soul food, so when it goes down your throat, you just kind of feel this warmth, kind of like when you're eating mashed potatoes. So you, you pluck a piece from the edge, mm -hmm. okay? Ooh, so for the little kids, it is very hot. <laughs> so for the little kids, we, we or you know, the new, new beginners, you can leave it out. <laughs> Wait, right, I'm gonna make a couple little bites. Okay, yeah, so for the little kids, we, we use little bites out so that they can, <laughs> yeah. For the little kids and for me. Sorry, for, <laughs> for younger kids and beginner salsa eaters. <laughs> So one cool thing is one day he comes to the farmer's market and she actually buys like 10 or 15 of these because we wrap them in plastic mm -hmm. and she goes home and freezes them so that she can eat it you know, a couple days later. She also eats it for breakfast. Okay, so you take your salsa, you scoop the peanut greens which are also blazing hot <laughs> and then you eat it. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Dinner's covered. <laughs> Dinner is served. It's so delicious. Yeah. And, and then, then you add salt if you want a little bit more salt or, you know, if it's fine, you just enjoy. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all soon.